Hey there, this is Tam and I'm doing second part of the CSS for beginners because there were some unanswered questions in the previous one. So like the targeting, how to actually target a specific element in more detail to override other pros targetings and stylings that you have from before, this is very important. Also how to target something that does not have a unique identifier so that you can target a specific column let's say in your, in your container. Also how to override things with important. And if you're a white label partner, how to customize and add styling for the whole solution to customize the whole user interface. But before we start, please like this video if you enjoy it and subscribe for the channel for awesome videos every week. So let's get started. All right, so there are a few very important things when it comes to CSS and targeting. So let's inspect this button. And basically inside you have the different, you know, stylings that are being applied with different uh, targeting and different classes. Now, we didn't mention in the previous video that um, if you're more detailed in how you target, meaning how, you know, as many different patterns that you have inside your targeting, that is more detailed and that will override any more broad targeting of that element. So narrow it down if you want to have more weight on that styling that you apply. So that will override previous stylings. Or if you have it just better down the line uh, of the CSS file as well. So anything that you actually add within the CSS area, that will pretty much override anything before that uh, as a styling because that was added before that. So it is fine in this case if you don't narrow it down in targeting, but in general, that's a good practice. Now, when we talk about overriding things, here in this element, you can see the element styling. So this we call inline styling when it comes uh, to CSS. And why do you have inline instead of, a, instead of a class for this? Because this is added by the platform. When you add some styling to the button, this is actually whatever you add in the styling of the button, in the styling settings actually all these settings will be applied in line because it is only for this particular button and that's why we have them in line but what if you want to override this with css for whatever reason so let's say that you want to make it 25 pixels um, so how do you add it with a class how do you do that uh, well here let's try to do it with um, with font size 25 here but as you can see that will not be applied and the reason for that is because inline styling is over always uh, with higher mm, weight instead of uh, CSS styling uh, as a classes. So how do we fix that? So the way to do it is by using the important option. So after the so you get uh, you leave a space and then you uh, type in exclamation and then important you can write down. So that will overwrite whatever previous styling you have. So as you can see that made the button 25 pixels and now that the 17 is striken because this now overrides it because of the important. The important makes it with uh, more weight for the whole um, CSS rule. So this is a way to override things using the important. Don't use it too much because generally it's not a good practice to use too much importance. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Now, we had in the previous video a comment, uh, people were asking how to target something that does not have some kind of an identifier. Like in the widgets, you have IDs, and this way you can target a specific button, let's say. But what if you want to target a specific column, that you don't have a, an identifier there, you don't have an ID. So in this case, we have here a column, part of this, um, this whole um, container. So how do you target this third uh, column here? So way to do it is, well, first of all, we can target the container first and then we can target the column and I'll show you now how you can do it. So if you go to the settings in the CSS, we can write down the ID of the container and we can start narrowing it down. So we have the grid content, which is the parent, and then we have the grid column. All right, but that is again a styling that we apply to all the columns. How do we apply it only for the third one? So here we can use the nth child. Or first of all, you can use the, let's look into the first child. First child will target the first, uh, first element that has the grid column in it. So that will be the first one. If you use the last child, it will take the last one. So last, first, child is used like this. What, but what if you want to target that, let's say, the middle one, the second one? How do you do that? You can use the nth child. 
So this is how you do it, and you just add which element. Let's say the middle one, the second one. Um, but you can also add not just numbers. Uh, numbers is obviously easy, but you can do it, for example, with like formulas. You can make it the n plus one um, or two n plus one, which would be all the odd um, or even in this case, because yeah, it would be the um, the, the even numbers. Um, so you can do different different uh, ways of targeting specific child. Uh, elements within the parent. In this case, all the uh, columns that have grid column inside of them. So this way you can do it. So if we do it with a third child, we can add, let's say, border uh, to pixels, um, solid um, white, for example, just for the sake of the example that we have here. And if we go and we refresh here we'll have now the border for the nth child and we just targeted that particular column alone and actually if we go into the column um, styling you see that this is applied now and as you can see it also have some inline so again if you want to apply some inline styling you can use again the important of uh, function in order to override things that are here in line for this element just like in the widget for the button that we were discussing so this is a way to target things in more details by using the nth uh, child or the last child or the first child now when it comes to css styling you can also apply it for your white label solution as well so if you're a white label partner and you want to customize different things about the user interface you can achieve it from the custom code area inside your styling and branding in a management panel meaning that you can add css and javascript to customize now when it comes to css you just have to add a everything that you have inside in a style um, tag inside of it so this is it you can just there put now start putting inside the css that you want to apply and you can do that for anything inside your system because this is your white label you can fully customize it so let's say that you want to do uh, some change to the the whole looks of your system let's say you want to change all the um, let's say here you don't you don't like the font size for example and you wanna you want to change the font size you can see where exactly the font size is being applied um, in this case we have it here if you want to just change it to something bigger let's say or a different font that you want to apply actually you can do those changes from within the the skins but if you want to do that you can just target by again copying the targeting that we have here because you don't have to write it yourself you can just grab it add it here add font size let's say 17 pixels you can add a different font family let's say uh, let's say font family being times new roman i think that's how it was written or the serif just to see the difference and we can click on save changes and now this css will be applied to this um, element well the the, the it was not accurate the, the way I, I targeted the, the font uh, itself, uh, but, uh, but the size it was applied, as you can see. So this way you can add any type of stylizations that you want. And you can go crazy. You can make things completely different. You can change the positions. You can change the, um, the icons even. You can change every little aspect of your system by applying CSS or JavaScript as well within the custom code area. Just don't forget to add the style opening and closing tag that indicates that this code is css and that will be applied to css and when you have script you add it as a script so yeah this is how you apply css inside your system if you're a white label partner to customize the user interface however you like all right so these are some of the cool things that you can do now with css with targeting with important with the white table if you're a white table partner with customizing your whole user interface so i hope that you enjoyed this video don't forget to like it if you did and subscribe for the channel for awesome videos every week all right thank you and talk to you in the next video